Hi and welcome, or welcome back to my channel. I'm Simon and today I am back with my July book haul. So some of the books that I was sent by publishers and all of the books that I bought myself. And the reason I say some books that I was sent by publishers is because I get quite a few unsolicited books that I'm not always sure are gonna be very me. There are some that I think might be and they end up on the pile of possibility, which at some point I really want to do a video of trying the first chapter of. I don't know if that'll be on here on Patreon, we will see. But then there are others that I'm just like, no, those are not for me. And so go on to other homes or get recycled or whatever. But the ones that I am showing you today, and I want to make sure that I do this more going forward, are ones that I'm really, really keen on. I think there is maybe one or two exceptions. And those are because they're books that have come on the periphery or come on my periphery. I've suddenly been on my periphery, whatever, because I've heard about them for various different reasons, but we'll get to those in a little bit. Anyway, that's me setting out my stall. I'm a little bit rusty because even though I posted my books of the year so far video on Sunday just gone, I actually, as I'm filming this now, have not filmed a video for this channel for almost a month. So bear with me, we might go on more tangents than usual. On that note, let's literally get to it and talk about first, as always, books that I have shown on this channel before, but it might have been that it was the hardback, now they're in paperback, or it was the proof and now the finished copies arrived, which is the case of the first book and one of my most anticipated books of the year so far, and that's Sam Sachs's You're Dead. Now, Sam Sachs is a poet who I adore the poetry of. I've read two of his collections, and I also think he's just a delight on Instagram. And this tells of a drastic last act of someone outside Trump Tower in New York and you follow their life leading up to that point and what's led them to doing this quite well very political act. I think this is going to be fascinating, haunting, compelling, everything -ing. I love it when poets write fiction. So I'm yeah, very excited for that one. And that is out, I think, in a week or so. Then we have a poetry collection that I've shared before. This is Tom Gunn's The Man With Night Sweats. And this is a poetry collection that is quite a um, canon piece within queer literature. And it's about the AIDS epidemic in New York and what followed on from there and sort of the shadows and the ripples that it cast. The new cover is by David Hockney. And this is something that I actually bought earlier this year and mean to read for ages. So I need to get to, and I'm thrilled that I have this edition. I think this is gonna be quite upsetting, but I think that's important. In fact, I feel like this is probably gonna be the same actually. Then we have a paperback copy of a book that I read and loved last year. This is Family Law by Elizabeth Acevedo, which is about, I think it's three sisters, and each one of them has a magical power in some way. And one of them, her power is that she can predict when people are going to die. And suddenly she says to her sisters and indeed her daughters and nieces that she wants to start planning not her own funeral but her own celebration of life and we follow on from there and i thought this was excellent when i read it so yeah i'm going to be passing that on to someone else then we have a book that arrived in proof form before and then this is another proof copy of it this is moderate to poor occasionally good by ellie williams who's the lies dictionary i absolutely loved this is um, their new collection. And yeah, as I said, I've been sent it in proof, which I'm gonna give this to my mum because she really liked the Lears, the Lears, the Liars Dictionary too, but also have now got the finished copy. So I'm guessing the folk at Fourth Estate really, really want me to read it, which is fine because I really, really do. So I'm gonna head to that very soon. I don't know much about it other than I think it's gonna be a bit quirky and bonkers, like, Ellie's debut, Atrib and Other Stories, which has now been reissued with this lovely cover and that hedgehog. This is kind of giving me the push to get to that. And again, I may give mum one of these copies because she uh, really, really likes Ellie's writing too. And then we have Toward Eternity by Anton Herr. I will be in conversation in foils in London a week today 
I'll link that down below because if you're nearby and can get there, please do come along because I think we're going to have a really, really fabulous chat. I love Anton. He's an absolute delight. I shall say no more. On to books that I haven't shared with you before and I have, uh, first of all, two reissues of an author whose most recent book I read early this year and absolutely loved and that was The Rachel Incident by Caroline O'Donoghue and here I have both scenes of a graphic nature and I have Promising Young Woman. Now I think both of these are now out and like I said I absolutely loved the Rachel incident and I have to actually thank Rachel of What Ray Reads for that because I wasn't sure until I saw her talking about it and then I was like now I could become fully obsessed with that book and frankly I did. I will link uh, Rachel's channel down below. Looking forward to heading to these in due course. Next we have a book that the lovely Andy Oliver has told me I will absolutely love and this is A Thousand Threads by singer Nana Cherry, who I have been a fan of. My aunties were big fans of Buffalo Stance, I remember that being played a lot when I was a kid. I came into her music through Seven Seconds, which is still one of my absolute favourite songs, and I loved, is it the album called Woman? Um, I love that, and I'm hoping as I read her memoir, I'm gonna head back to the back catalogue of Amazing Music, and I think that's gonna give it like a really nice extra layer. Really looking forward to getting into this. This is out in October, as is the new Edward Carey book. This is Edith Holler. I read Edward Carey's Little and absolutely loved it. That was like a reimagining of Madame Tussaud's life with his, I'm going to say really quirky and quite unsettling pictures and illustrations throughout. I mean, the cover is one of them. And this is set in 1901. It's about Edith Holler, who is living at, I'm assuming, the family theatre because it's called the Holler Theatre. And she's told that if she ever leaves, the theatre will crumble. And so she's kind of kept where she is. I don't know if it's based on a historical character. I haven't looked that up yet, but I'm really, really looking forward to it. This is giving me autumn vibes. I think... Edward does quite different things with his fiction, which is always exciting. Then Out in November is a short story collection that I feel a little bit of a fraud for being sent because I haven't read this author's two novels yet. I have really, really wanted to, particularly her latest, because I'm kind of in the mood for literary thrillers and her previous one was, it was Penance, because this is Eliza Clark, she's always hungry. Now, I'm going to insert the cover, the finished cover of this here. I think this is one of my favourite covers. Not only is that pink bathroom just divine, it's that green hand. And as we are heading for the release of Wicked in November, it's also giving serious Elphaba, I couldn't say that one, Elphaba vibes. I'm so excited for that movie, it's untrue. Anyway, I've heard this is going to be really quirky and bonkers and that's what I want. But anyway, we have that. And then next up is a book that I think is out now. I actually was very kindly gifted this from one of you lovely lot because it was on my wish list, which I will link down below. And my wish list is books that I see that I think are going to be quite me out in America or, well, basically abroad where I can't get them in any bookshops here. That's my rule. However, this has now got a publisher here because it's here in my hands. And that is Lush Lives by J. Vanessa Lyon. This is a book that's set in New York, which is one of the things that intrigued me. It's also the second in Roxanne Gay's Publishing House's books in America and I really love the first one that came out here funnily enough by Atlantic Grove 2. Basically I'm intrigued to head to this one as I liked that one so much. Then next up and also that I'm ashamed to say I have never read before so I was thrilled to be sent this from the folk at Dialogue Books. I don't know when it's there because it doesn't say on this proof. This book Memories of Girlhood Bone Black is by Bell Hooks and I've only heard amazing things about Bell Hooks writing. So very, very, very excited for this. And I'm hoping like the memoir will send me off to other of her works. So yeah, already came for that one. Then we have, um, I'm going in size order. So we've got some mid-size finished paperbacks. The first of which I'm super duper excited about because I absolutely loved this author's debut novel. This is Babylonia by Costanza Casati and it says Kings Fall, Queens Rise. 
also it's got a leopard print which I really really love and I thought that Clytemnestra was absolutely brilliant it's one of my favorite sort of classical myth retellings and so I'm very excited to see what she does in a different era of history loving that sort of shiny tealy turquoise yeah really excited for that one now I mentioned there are going to be a couple of books that have been sent by publishers that are not like I'm not necessarily super excited about but they've come on my periphery and I've read this author before and it was when she was last uh long listed I don't know if she was short as I can't remember for the Booker Prize it's Rachel Kushner and this is Creation Lake and this to me sounds very like Burnham Wood in the fact that it's kind of a thriller set around the climate crisis and that does intrigue me. It has been described as, I think, Kill Bill written by John le Carre. I'm not sure if that sounds to me exactly, apart from the Kill Bill bit, I haven't read any John le Carre and I haven't really had the urge to. But I've heard it kind of also gives real spy vibe. So again, that literary thriller vibe that I'm in the mood for, this could be perfect for. That's my new thing as well. You see that, and then I did that, and now it's actually... Next up is a book that I'm pretty excited about. Um, I would be more excited if it was the next in his other series which he's giving a bit of a break for at the moment because I've become a real fan of that series as I've got to know the characters more and more and more and more of their pasts have been revealed and that's the first Thursday Murder Club. This is We Sold Murders by Richard Appleton and on the front it's got a cat and a gun saying here comes trouble and then you have the, well, what will be the finished cover. And I don't know anything about this at all. I want to go into it pretty much with no knowledge whatsoever. It's out in September. I plan to read it before then. I said I wanted more thrillers, um, so that will be one. Now, I am intrigued for this. It's an absolute junkster, but also I'm going to say something a little bit possibly controversial and I'm going to point this out with other books as and when they come in. This is Margaret Atwood's Paper Boat, which is New and Selected Poems, 1961 to 2023. That cover is so boring, it doesn't really make me want to pick it up. Like I'm thrilled that I've got a Margaret Atwood book in advance. She's an author that I really, really love. But I just like, when I'm finished with that, am I going to want to post that anywhere? Not really. And I think it is something that publishers need to think about. Anyway, this is massive, as I mentioned. I will say it's a lovely floppy edition and I do love that. I think I'm gonna read these in bits and bobs as I go along. It's out in October. It's Margaret Atwood. It's poetry. There we go. And then penultimately from publishers, well, that's not actually sort of true, but penultimately from publishers that have arrived in the post, not that a publisher's arrived in the post. What I mean is, but ultimately, from books that have come in the post from publishers, there we go, is The God of the Woods by Liz Moore. And this is a book that I actually asked for a copy of because I've heard such amazing things. And as I said, I'm in the mood for a literary thriller. And this is probably going to be the first of those that I had to. I had a COVID The Flirt Edition. That's what The Strain's called. I thought that I was going to get through some then. However, I just needed a bit of a breather from reading. So I um, didn't. I've heard it's about a young girl who goes missing at a summer camp. And it turns out that the girl's family own that the land which the summer camp is on and also more ominously their son disappeared in the same place that sounds super intriguing i've also seen mercedes raving about this so that is a very good sign last of the books from publishers that came in the post we have the fertile earth by Rudvika Rao and this is the other of the books that i was mentioning where they've come from publishers and i wasn't really sure they're for me but Ben Reads Good, whose channel I will link down below. He mentioned this in his Booker Predictions video and it really, really intrigued me. Sweeping story of forbidden love of friendship and betrayal, power and revenge set against the tumultuous political landscape of post-independence India. And I have not read that many books set in India for quite a while. It's an area of the world that I, I really love reading about and often enjoy the writing from there too. So looking forward to getting to that one. Then, before I head on to books that I bought myself, a book that was put in my hand literally by a publisher um, was The Eyes of the Best Part by Monica Kim. And I've heard bits about this and I think all I'm going to say is the title along with the cover. You know, you know what you're getting with this book. The Eyes are the Best Part. I think this is going to go with my desire for a pretty 
unhinged and all the other uns that I mentioned in my summer reading plans video. Books I bought myself and I'm going to start off with books that I have shown you before as with all of these that came in proof and I got the finished copies and also I have read all of these. I say all of these, it's three books, but I'm thrilled at that. The first of which is Bear by Julia Phillips. I absolutely loved Julia Phillips' um, Disappearing Earth when I read that a couple of years ago, so I was so excited when I saw this coming out. Also, love this cover. Also, anything with bears, I'm quite a fan of. And um, this is about two sisters, and one day they see a bear outside their house, which is very unusual considering where they are, and we follow their relationship from that point and learn more about them. And yeah, I'm, I'll be talking about this in my wrap up, so I won't say too much more now, but the way that she builds atmosphere and tension is utterly incredible. And this I thought was fab, as I did Orbital by Samantha Harvey, which is also on the Booker Prize long list. And I am thrilled for it because I'm a huge fan of Samantha Harvey anyway. I've read all of her books bar one, I think. And at some point, once I've read that one, I may well do an author spotlight uh, video on her because I just think she's great. The Western Wind is one of my all time fave books. It's a historical, I think it's medieval, literary crime novel told backwards. It's just absolutely brilliant. Now this is very different. This is about a group of astronauts out in space, orbiting Earth, observing a, well, a huge storm and typhoon that's headed for land, um, and also sort of thinking about, well, I'll talk more about this in my wrap-up because as I mentioned, I read it because I have a new rule, which is if I buy a hardback, and we'll head, pick the next one up in a second, I'm gonna read, start reading them the month that I buy them because otherwise they linger on my shelves like, well, the proof of this one did. I finally got this because it was half price in Cambridge along with the next one. And um, the paperback was already out. Like, I've just got to stop doing that. If there are books by authors that I'm really keen to get to, I just need to get to them because also, hardbacks aren't cheap. I thought this was fab. More on that in my wrap up, as there will be more on Letters Descend by Jasmine Ward. This was a signed edition as well that I got half price at Heppers in Cambridge. Also, hello to the four link. So, yeah pleased with myself that I've read three books at least on the part. I don't think I've read any. <gasps> no, I have. I've read three more. So there we are. Sorry. <laughs> so pleased with myself. Um, next up is a book that the author Jane Rawson recommended to me on Instagram. Uh, if you haven't read any Jane Rawson yet, where have you been? She's one of my favourite authors and I wanged on about From the Wreck for quite some time. I even had a quote on the cover of the UK edition, which I think is stunning and what a hopefully put it there. Anyway, uh, she recommended that I read this, which is Astray by Kate Crummink. And this is the second book that Kate has published this year. I've actually done an order of a few Australian books that are coming. And this month, I'm doing something very different in the fact that I'm gonna try to read everything that I buy in the month that I buy it just throughout August. Now, technically, I bought those books in July, so that could be as, like, cop out if I need it, but my plan is to get to them all. Anyway, she's clearly quite prolific. I'm absolutely obsessed with this cover. I hadn't heard of the publisher before, Weatherglass. Actually, that's not true. I think, again, mentioning Ben over at Ben Reads Good, he'd mentioned another book published by them that he thought was up for the booker. I want to get to more Australian fiction as well. And um, Now, is it Oz August... Aussie Author Month or Aussie Author August or something at the moment. I feel like there's an Aussie August thing going on. So yeah, I will be heading to more Australian fiction, but also just, I love Australian fiction when I read it. So I should read more of it. Then we have two uh, novels by the same author. This is a project that I've been wanting to do this summer, which is to read um, Elizabeth Strout, some of Elizabeth Strout backlist leading up to her forthcoming novel, which, we uh, see the Burgess boys, well, all the Burgess brothers, Olive Kitteridge, and um, I was going to say Elizabeth Stroud because her books just seem so real to me that I always think that I either call her characters her or vice versa. Anyway, also feature, oh my goodness, why Lucy Barton, there we go. I was going to read her first two first. I don't think I'm going to do that now. I'm just going to head to the Burgess boys, Olive Kittredge and then Olive again, but got those because 
that's a reading project that I've given myself. Um, I mentioned, I think, in my summer reading plans, having bought The Shark Heart by Emily Habeck. And this is about a woman who is newly married and her husband finds out that he's slowly going to turn to a shark. And I am mildly obsessed with sharks. Um, I have swum with them. And so, yeah, I wanted to get to that. Haven't yet, but will soon. That's not what I'm going to be able to say about any books that I bought in August, is it? No. I also picked up a, a finished copy of The Paperback of Radical Love by Neil Blackmore when I was uh, picking up this because it was buy one, get one free at Waterstones. And I really want to head to his books. I've got um, most of them, but again, the proof of this was really a bit of a plain Jane. And uh, yeah, this is pretty. So that's what I did. I know. I know, that's really materialistic and a bit sad. Then we have I Went to See My Father by Kyung Suk Shin, translated by Anton Her, the aforementioned delight that is Anton Her. And this may or may not be my next pick for Patreon Book Club because I didn't realise you need to read Please Look After Mother first. I'm thinking, mm, I don't want to read this. If I need to have read the other one first, I want to read them in order. But anyway. I've got this, looking forward to getting to it at some point. I really loved Violets by this author. Then we have a book that again, Mercedes has raved about and fits that literary thriller vibe. In fact, she did a brilliant video on literary thrillers. I will link that down below. This is The Damages by Genevieve Scott. And she was saying in that video that this reminded her of uh, Rebecca Mackay's I Have Some Questions For You, which I enjoyed. I would say like that was a good 7.5 out of 10. Um, but she said that this was possibly a little bit better, I think. I don't normally like a campus novel, I won't lie. But um, I did really love The Secret History. I really enjoyed, I have some questions for you. And so, yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to that. I don't know why I just suddenly roped all of those in together. As soon as I say campus novel, instantly The Secret History comes to mind. Now, this is a book published by Verve Books, which are a publisher that I haven't had much experience with but when I was then looking into them after having seen this book I also spotted The Nude by C. Michelle Lindley and this sounds really interesting it's about a woman who goes on holiday and I think what happens to how a nude gets anyway well let me read you the blurb because that's what drew me in I don't normally like to read blurbs on the channel but sometimes that's a better way of doing it. 1999, an island off the southern coast of Greece, art historian Elizabeth Clark arrives with the intent to acquire a rare female sculpture but what begins as a quest for a highly valued cultural artifact evolves into a trip that will force Elizabeth to contend with her ambition, her desire and her troubling history. Disorientated by jet lag, de Disorientated by jet lag, debilitating migraines and a dependence on prescription pills, Elizabeth finds herself enthralled by her new surroundings and equally by her translator's inscrutable wife, a young artist named Theo. As the nude's acquisition proves to be riskier than she could ever imagine, the fates of Elizabeth and the sculpture are called into question. To find a way out, Elizabeth will grapple with the role to find a way out, Elizabeth must grapple with the role she's played in the global art trade and the ethical fallout her personal and professional decisions could leave behind. I'm intrigued by this. I don't normally love books about art, but this, I don't know, it's also slightly given me vibes of Marble. Now, who wrote Marble? I'll leave the author's name down below, but I, I really love that. And I made me think that maybe Mum would like this too, because she really loved that book. Anyway, that's those down there. Then a book that I just saw so many people rave about last year and indeed a few of my patrons have gone on and on about and that's Hello Beautiful by Anne Napolitano. I don't really know much about this however the fact that the right people have raved about it makes me think that maybe I need to give it a whirl. I don't know if I'm gonna love it and I don't want the songs as a font but we'll see. I will try it. It was a bit of a rash purchase but one that I was feeling poorly and maybe did a big Blackwell's order online. Um, then we have, and this is one that I purchased again from Blackwell's because um, I saw people are saying it's a sequel, some people are saying it's a prequel, but anyway, um, this is There There by uh, Tommy Orange and Wandering Stars, is it our Wandering Stars, Wandering Stars? That is on the Booker long list. I'm kind of intrigued by that one, but I thought I need to read There There first and so bought it. Then we have 
a book that I picked up because the cover is hot pink and I was flicking through this in a bookshop earlier this month and was fascinated by the fact that it had like emails and it had some odd illustrations and stuff in it and it's The Unfortunates by J.K. Chukwu and it says Sahara is a student at one of the most elite universities in America. Again, don't normally love a campus novel, maybe something's changing and she is not okay. Her grades are subpar, she's not Nigerian enough for her family and her long-term life partner is threatening to take over. When she's not contemplating killing herself or the wealthy white students around her, she's received, and that was what really, really intrigued me, I mean, come on, killing the wealthy white students around her, she's receiving, she's receiving an increasing number of unfortunate news emails which inform her that the few black classmates she has are disappearing. Will Sahara end up joining the ranks of the unfortunates or can she avoid becoming yet another statistic? I think this sound book is going to be so good. Uh, and then another one that was a bit of, um, I feel like I say and then and next quite a lot in these videos. I have a sip of tea every time I do. Next we have Playing Games by Huma Qureshi and this is one that I've just seen so many people raving about. It was, was it actually Jen Campbell's favourite book of last year? I feel like it was Jen's favourite book of last year. Also Zubs, who I absolutely adore on Instagram, she's been raving about it recently. I've just seen everyone loving it and I was like, right, I need to get it. I don't know much about it at all. I want to, so I'm not going to read a blurb for you that one. This next book is a bit of a random buy, but it's because I was at the place it was set and was so sort of taken over by that place. I was like, well, I need to read something set there. And it's I Spy by Rhian Tracy, and it's a Bletchley Park mystery, the first in the series. And Bletchley Park, Bletchley Park? Bletchley Park absolutely blew my mind when me and mum went there after we had been in uh, Cambridge where we did uh, our first ever event together with Mary Beard, which was lovely. I haven't talked about that. Maybe I will at some point. Anyway, I picked that up there. I was like, I need to get a book about Bletchley Park, but all of the other ones looked a bit grown up and boring or possibly a bit too clever for me was what I thought. So I thought that's a good way in. And then I can't remember where I got this or where I saw this, but this is Grease Paint by Hannah Levine. It's from a small publisher called Night Boat Books. And it just, I think it came up as like a recommendation somewhere and I, I literally can't for the life of me remember but it's um, a queer novel and I want to read it and I hadn't heard about it and that's all I can say so there we are. And now on to the final three books which are all hardbacks I bought in July and bar one of them I actually read them all in July so I read two of three of these in July and read the one that I hadn't at the beginning of this month. Wow, timey wimey. First of those is Brat by Gabrielle Smith. Now I have to say I ordered this American edition because I think this English edition is one of the ugliest covers I have ever seen. That said, <laughs> that cover does more justice to how I felt about this book than this cover does. That's all I'm saying. You can wait until my wrap up for that one. As you can, my thoughts on In Tongs by Thomas Grattan. This is one of the most recommended books to me this year. I have loads and loads of lovely fellow book loving friends over in America and they're like, you would love it, you would love it, you would love it. Did I love it? You'll have to wait and see until my wrap up. Also, that hot pink is back. And then the book that I literally finished this morning is Highway 13 by Fiona McFarlane. I had no idea that she had a new book out. It's weird because she's one of those authors. I read The Night Guest, which was her debut when it came out and absolutely loved it. It's about a woman who believes that at night a tiger is padding through her house why she isn't sure, why we aren't sure, is it real, is it not real, what's going on. The way Fiona McFarlane builds tension in that is brilliant and the way she builds tension in this is also incredible. But I love that book so much that in my head she's a favourite author even though I also have her two other books and haven't read them yet. One's another short story collection and another one's a novel. I say this is a short story collection, it's not being necessarily marketed that everywhere. It's being marketed more as interlinking short story, which they do as in some way, each of these stories, which go from 1950s to 2028, are linked to a serial killer in Australia. Not a spoiler before 
my July wrap up say that, well, actually, now it'll be my August wrap up, won't it? Um, but no, spoiler, before I do that, to say that this is one of my favourite books of the year. I think what she has done here is absolutely fantastic. Also, Australian, so perfect for Aussie author August or Aussie August or whatever it's being called. So there we go. Anyway, that was my July book haul. I'm sort of back. I am going to be doing videos every Thursday going forward with the occasional Sunday one if I've got something extra to add because I've got potentially a new favourite book video to do. I haven't read the book yet but I think it's going to be one of my favourites. I also want to do a video on how two books really talk to each other on the Booker Long or how I think they're going to because again I haven't read one of them. It was nice to have a break. I did miss having the chats and the comments. That is something you know, that I definitely missed. It was lovely watching other YouTubers and having a bit more time to watch more YouTube, also just having more time to read, even though I got sick. Uh, but yeah, I wasn't aware if I was going to have another break after doing this haul, my wrap up, uh, until September. But as it goes, as it stands now, I think I'm back. But if that changes, I'll let you know. Anyway, I hope you're all doing super duper well. If you would like more of my silly bookish shenanigans on the internet, then you can find my. Uh, Instagram, my artist formerly known as Twitter X, although I don't really do much on that. Although actually no, that's not true. I'm trying to document every book that I read in August on there um, to try and put something nice on what is kind of a toxic place. Uh, but also my Patreon, my wishlist, all those things are down below. And I will see you in another video very, very soon. Bye.